Australia pledging thousands of vaccines to PNG with this crisis they're facing. I'm joined by Member for Leichhardt, Warren Inch, now for his reaction to it. Your seat, uh, many of our viewers might not know, but your seat basically goes all the way up. How close does it get to we PNG? Go, we go almost to Papua New Guinea. I mean, with it, up on my outer islands there, where we've got significant population, Torres Strait Islands, it's less than four kilometres. You can actually stand on the water on the on the on the waterfront on Saibai, and you can see the cooking fires in uh, Zigabadu, which is on the mainland of Papua New Guinea. And if you could imagine, in the wet season, uh, the deer from mainland in Papua New Guinea swim across the channel onto Saibai, mm -hmm. and uh, they they graze there until the surface water disappears. Then they swim back. That's how close it is, and the, the wow. islanders enjoy. Uh, a feast of uh, venison. Yeah, right. And so. but the island, the islanders from uh, the Torres Strait and PNG, in some respects, live as one community. Well, that well, that they're all, a lot of them are interrelated. You know, they're, 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 uh, there's a lot of uh, Papua New Guinea and uh, young women marry into the into the families. A lot of them. Uh, yeah, no, very close relationships. It's not just Saibai neither. It's uh, Boy Boygu is another one, which is a little bit further to the west, um, and that's closer to a couple of little villages called Busi Bur, not much further apart, and uh, Badu and uh, Yam Island there, or, or Ayama. They they are all have very close connections. So if there's a wedding or something on uh, in any of these communities, often you'll see a whole heap of. Uh, a banana boats that have come down from one of the PNG villages uh, to participate in that. Well, the, it's a pretty good reminder of how this is not just a philanthropic thing that Australia is doing to PNG or as a friend, it's also for our interest in terms of if COVID gets into those parts of the PNG, it'll basically end up in Queensland. Karen, it, there, there are two elements to the story that broke today. One is in relation to the broader Papua New Guinean challenges. I mean, the health system is totally... It just cannot cope with this. And, um, and so we need to be supporting them there. I've been, I've been uh, raising this and, and working with both the Prime Minister and Foreign Affairs Minister now for a couple of months on this issue. I've been focusing more on the second one, which is the Treaty Villages. There's about 15 villages and they, they, work, they, they travel within a protected zone area which brings them in contact, to family contacts. They're the ones that I wanted to get done for quickly. When we, we, when we, start, we only started on um, Monday rolling out the uh, uh, vaccinations into these outer islands and it's critical. And as I said to the Prime Minister, and, and I say thanks to both PM and the... Uh, Foreign Affairs Minister for listening. This is absolutely critical that we do those treaty villages. Understand for, they're in a real challenge at the moment because the Papua New Guinean government has banned them from travelling across the PNG border, right? And so this poses a particular problem. There is no welfare in Papua New Guinea. And so what if they can't grow it or if they can't catch it, then they go hungry. And... They rely heavily on Saibai and Boigu in particular, the local stores there, to get their basics like fuel, uh, cooking oil, rice, flour, sugar, etc. Uh, hand detergent, washing powder, etc. And, in fact, to a point where the, the Saibai store, 60% of its trade comes from Papua New Guinea. 60%. Now, they've been blocked from coming across. So the only place place they can go now for under the current arrangements is to Daru. Now, I speak regularly to the leaders within these villages. I know a lot of them very well. And uh, as of this morning, talking to them, there is still no COVID that they're aware of. They're very aware of it. They're very anxious about it. But there is none within these treaty villages. But what's happening, because they are forced to go to Daru for their food, which is their essentials, um, they're going into an area where there's a lot of a lot of uh, of COVID. H hence, the, your effort via yeah, the Prime Minister vaccinated. to get all of those communities vaccinated. And I'm really thrilled that, that that we are rolling it out. We need to do it first there, not only for them but also for our for our own Torres Strait Islands, our own Australian citizens. But I've also asked him to to reconsider how I managed to get two food supplies in early in the piece, but unfortunately. They were blocked by uh, some of our bureaucrats. But I'm trying... I'm, and the PM's now 
looking at how we can possibly get some more food into those, just the basics, mm. um, to support them while we go on through this emergency and get that vaccine, vaccine out to them. Well, that's a good initiative. We wish you all the best with it. And we'll stay in touch because uh, it'll, it'll be, you know, important for, I think, our viewers, for the nation to stay across what's happening up there because that really is the, the front line when it comes to... Australia's own response. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, there was always an intention that we would, as, as a first world uh, developed uh, and wealthy nation, of course, we've got to supply a, a support our Pacific neighbours, but, I mean, it's becoming a real problem in, in, in uh, PNG. It's only, and I might add, it's only been very, very in recent days that the Papua New Guinean government has actually reached out and asked for this support, okay. and they are a sovereign nation, and you just can't go in there and tell them what to do. And, and so good on them for asking, yep. and fantastic that we've made these announcements. It is indeed. Warren Ench, thanks. Thanks, Thank you Karen. soon. Now,